Goldfish is a fantastic fish to hunt. They live in massive shoals and they swarm all around you. So exciting to hunt for them. Really, really fun stuff. They taste delicious as well, kind of halfway between a cod and a mackerel. And the North Glynn, where I filmed these sessions, is one of the UK's premier spearfishing destinations. Really, really cool area, so much to see, breathtakingly remote, and some incredible scenery. Now, I spend a lot of time scouting for new marks. I love to hit the most remote places possible. I find those produce the most fish. But it can be quite exhausting at times, slogging up the coast path in the heat. But it is the best way to find new marks. And you can see here, getting really high up to get a good view. Now, the first part of this video, I'm going to go through my process for how I find new marks and exactly what I'm looking for. This is mostly based around hunting large pollock, which my last video was about. So hopefully you'll find this section quite useful. So I'm just out for a little recce of some new marks. I thought I'd go through my process when wrecking these areas. I spend a lot of time walking the coast path, looking at the charts, looking at the currents, and I'll show you what I'm looking for. Apologies about any wind sound in the camera. I've not got a microphone. You can see behind me a series of points and headlands. Now what we're hoping for is a decent strength current pushing past these points and headlands, and the points and headlands creating a slack behind them. And that's where I've been getting most of my bigger pollock and my better coal fish. You don't tend to see so many bass here, don't know why that is, but it's pretty good for pollock. And generally once you've found an area like this with deep water quite close by, it drops down to over 50 meters, a couple of hundred meters out, and the pollock tend to come into the kelp in the shallows, often in the early morning or at dusk to hunt sand eel. And it's just a matter of trying these areas and seeing what tides take to hold fish. Some of these points will hold fish, some of these points will not hold fish. Just tried one of them this morning, um, saw loads of coal fish but no big pollock but it looks like the sort of place that could hold big pollock at a different tide state or time of day so I'm going to try these two points in the foreground uh, this evening and then there's a couple more further down the coast towards the tip of the clin, the Bardi Sound, I'll try those tomorrow morning. So the difference between a coal fish and a pollock is mostly the shape of the tail which you can sort of see here, there's two coal fish to the left and a pollock to the right, see a coal fish on the right there They've also got a, a white stripe down the middle of them. You can see a coalfish there in the foreground with a distinctive tail shape. There's almost more of a notch out of their tail than the pollock. You can see here a pollock here, golden all the way through, quite a flat sort of tail. And the marks they live at are pretty similar. They both like quite a lot of structure. The coalfish will put up with a bit more swell than the pollock. Um, but they like these kind of areas. You can see just the shoulder pollock here. Lovely blue light, one of those really cool diving moments. And getting into a good ambush position for these fish is really important. They'll sense your presence in the kelp and they'll come and investigate, but you've got to remain as hidden as possible as I am just here. And coalfish do like areas, lots of bait fish. They eat mostly sand eels, and you can see loads of bait fish here. Now I find most of these bait fish in areas are pretty strong current. The North Clint is known for its strong currents. You can see a serious current racing through here and in these areas you've got to stay pretty close to the rocks you can see me clinging onto the kelp here prior to diving there's absolutely no way you could breathe up fighting a current like this you'd be out of breath just on the surface now these areas of current can be quite productive you don't often find the larger pollock in these areas of current but it can be pretty good for bass and for coalfish what i'm hoping really here is the shoal of coalfish or a shoal of bass will just pump around this headland and i can pick one off but unfortunately this dive it was not to be. All that was present were small pollock. Now the coalfish is a very, very inquisitive sort of fish. Probably even more inquisitive than the pollock. <clears throat> and when you get to a good area like this pinnacle here, they'll come in pretty fast. They don't spook that much either. I think they believe there's safety in numbers. And they will shoal up very densely, as you'll see in a minute. <clears throat> And if you just stay still for long enough, they will come in really, really close. And if you decide to shoot one, then you've got loads of time to make sure of a really good, solid shot on these fish. The flesh of the coalfish is a lot firmer than the pollock. It's not as firm as a bass, so they can rip off, but it's much, much firmer than the pollock. And the thing with the coalfish as well, which is great, is they've not got to be that big to get a decent amount of meat from them. A 35 centimeter coalfish is worth shooting. They've got a lot more meat than the pollock. There are more round-bodied fish than the pollock. And the meat, as I said earlier, it's kind of halfway between a, a cod and a mackerel. Absolutely delicious sort of meat to have. And the sand line is a very good area for coalfish, as it is for pollock. You 
can see me dropping down here onto the sand line and a shoal of coalfish appears very quickly. I'd actually seen this shoal from the surface, decided to dive down onto it, obviously you spook them and then once you've settled on the bottom they all tend to come back in and investigate what exactly has dropped down right in front of them. And whilst some people have shot some quite big coalfish off the UK, most of them are this sort of size. These are between 35 and 45 centimetres, so it's important to try and pick out the biggest one you can because they don't get that big in this sort of depth. There's about 8 metres here. It's important to really bide your time and wait for that standout fish in the shoal. There's no point shooting one too small, and I'll pick out a nice fish there and put in a perfect stone shot from range. See that coalfish there, that's just over 40 centimetres, it's not a massive fish, but it's worth shooting. I usually find that three fillets of coalfish is about right for a, a good sized meal. I'm in again now, this is on a slightly different area. Less current here, and a coalfish comes on its own. And as they don't really spook, you've got a lot of time to line the shot up. And again, I put in a really nice stone shot on that coalfish. switched area again to an area with a bit more structure. I was finding these areas with structure seem to hold more big shoals of coalfish. The other thing with coalfish is that they seem to like areas that have got very deep water close by. As I was saying in the video about finding the marks, this area has 50 metres depth within a few hundred metres of the shoreline and I think they spend a lot of time in deep water. You can see two sort of nice coalfish there, both about 40 centimetres, pretty good coalfish. And I switched area yet again trying to chase these shells, went through this little channel that the tide was surging through and instantly dropped in to a stunning area absolutely stuffed full of coalfish, they live in really dense shoals and seeing one of these shoals pumping past you is a real sight underwater, it's hard to just describe how good it is, they shoal very densely and it's very difficult to pick out which coalfish to shoot sometimes, you've got a lot of options here and they're all about the same. You know, the smallest fish is about 35, the biggest is about 45. And you really are spoiled for choice. You've just got to sit there, wait it out. Having a good breath hold is very important for this sort of spearfishing because you've got a lot of time. The coalfish have a habit of really milling around right in front of you. I don't know why they do that. You just keep on grunting occasionally, then they will stay inquisitive and just sit in front of you. Give you plenty of time to line up an easy shot on one, like this one here. And of course, when you're hunting coalfish, you do often find yourself in areas where larger pollock are present, which is a real bonus. You can see here, not a lot of swell in this area. Big pollock really seem to hate swell. Don't quite know why that is. Mullet and bass like swell. Coalfish don't mind it too much, but big pollock seem to like really, really calm water. This is a nice fish, about 60 centimetres, shot through in a, a coalfish session, so a nice bonus. And of course, the North Clin has some stunning scenery everywhere. I absolutely love spearing there, it's a beautiful place and you'll never see another Spearow there. <laughs> it is absolutely deserted. Now, cooking the coalfish. I use lots of butter, so I always melt that first in the pan. Then I add my coalfish in there, skin side down. And you'll see here the fillets don't really break apart. Pollock would just fall apart if you cooked it like this. I use loads and loads of butter. It fries a lot faster with plenty of butter. And you can literally just season with salt and pepper. There's obviously bread crumbing, there's bacon, there's garlic, there's lots of seasonings you can use, but because the meat of the coalfish is so delicious, you can just cook it in butter, salt, pepper, and then a bit of lemon juice afterwards. It's a stunningly good sort of fish, and I couldn't wait to eat these coalfish. I've got a bit bored of eating loads of pollock after my last dive session, it's been pollock every day. But the coalfish is a welcome change. You can see here just how firm that meat is. And I would thoroughly recommend that you hunt for coalfish in your local areas. They're not massive, you're not going to get a great Instagram shot, but really cool fish to eat. And I had a really, really good couple of sessions here on the North Clin. I recommend you give it a try, it's pretty remote. We're we'll producing lots more content on the North Clin over this summer. It's my favourite area to dive, so if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like, leave me a comment and subscribe to the channel. You'll see plenty more content just like this, and I will see you in the next video.